Hey, stop telling people to do some mistake, and I'll explain just in a second. All right guys, so today we're gonna explore the, the options of striking with a stick, even with the empty inversion of the, the Kali. Um, and here's why I don't teach people to go for the disarm, but rather to understand the principle of a disarm, okay? And before we kind of go, go on about this, we have to understand this, right? It doesn't matter what system of Kali that you study or the uh, Filipino martial system, right? You have La Costa, you have Villa Braille, you have Illustrismo, you have Bolintawak, right? You understand that if you see all these different systems, they all teach angle one the same way, right? It doesn't matter what type of La Casa angle system, number one, right? You have Illustrismo, angle one, right? Even in uh, Bolintawak, angle one, it is still here. Um, in all the systems, they'll teach angle one univer universal, and the reason why is because if I hand a weapon to a random person, right, the, anybody that's on train, if you were to strike me from any position with a stick, right, what we do, right? So the angle is probably gonna end up being this diagonal strike with the right hand, right? And that's assuming that he's a right hand, but Mike's actually left hand. So he will strike with the angle one with the left hand like that, right? So that's a very universal strike, and you can kind of see that across the board, right? the swing with the hand like that. So you generally, you'll see this motion and this motion right here, right? If I ever train myself to, like, to understand Kali, that will be the two strike I have to learn how to defend properly, right? So in our system, we have so many different ways to talk about this, right? For my personal preference is we have to understand three things. Number one, it's a range control, right? If he's approaching me with a stick, right? Or something that's known that I can see from further away. Let's just say he's stepping out of a frame, right? I can see that coming. The first instinct that I will do is I'm gonna run and, run and scream for help, right? I'm not gonna stay here to fight this guy because he's got a weapon. And that's saying that um, if I don't have a weapon myself, right? I don't have anything. Why am I gonna stay here and fight this guy, right? But if I was trapped, right, in a place where, like this, it's a closed space, we'll have nowhere to go. Maybe I'm trapped by the wall, right? Then maybe I'll have to find a way to fight. Then I'll start looking for a weapon of opportunity. That could be your cell phone, your keychain, your wallet, whatever you have, even your belt, right? If you happen to carry a stick, great, right? If you can randomly find a stick, even better, right? But the chance of finding a stick like this, <laughs> the chance is very low. But we're just gonna talk about this. If you happen to carry a, a flexible baton or a foldable baton, right? If I'll be fighting with him, he comes to me with a stick. The first thing I have to understand is a range of his control, right? He has to step in in order for him to hit me round right ahead, right? Everybody has become a head hunter on the streets. So this is a very visible target, right? If my head is here, he's gonna hit it, right? So there's a thing saying that evade the head, then the body will move, right? That's the first thing you have to understand, right? It takes time for him to come to me, but it also takes time for me to go back. If I happen to have a weapon, I probably don't want to stay here and go like this, tang tang, right? In the old school saying of Kali would say, if I was on a battlefield, I might sacrifice my arm, right? In order for him to cut through the body or maybe cut through his head, right? But for me, it's like, I don't want to sacrifice my arm just yet, right? So that's my last resort. So for me, the first thing we teach is evade and hit the limp, right? That's one way. So in, in, in the Kali system, you can hit to the knuckle, you can hit to the inside of the arm. If you got longer reach, you can hit to the head before he hits you, right? I don't have that reach. So for me, this becomes a first attack, which is hitting on the hand, right? The second deer attack becomes hitting on the inside of the elbow or the forearm, like that, right? So for me, it's understanding the first attack, he hits me around the head. He stepped back a little bit, so he's out of range. So he comes into attack, boom, again. He comes in attack, then I evade to hit the hand. Sometimes I'll just even place a stick around the middle, right? As he comes in, I just move out, see? So that stick touches his hand. He hits my head, I step back, and I can hit that knuckle right there. That's the first thing I can teach, right? And I, I kind of like talk about this a lot too, is you have to understand the evasion first, right? This is what called a, you have a male triangle. This is called a male triangle. You can go backwards. So as I go backwards, I move my body, see? And then the stick hits like that, right? But however, if I'm in a position where I'm not allowed to move backwards, let's just say that I'm against a wall right here. Now, crap, I can't move back because I'm stuck. Then in this case, I will have to use my female triangle to move it 45 forward. In this case, I don't do this yet because even with the force that comes in, he's not gonna collapse my hand. So the first thing I'll do with the stick is I'm gonna hit right in the knuckle right there, right? You notice that this is a very risky move. So a lot of people will actually do it this way with both of the hands. They will hit the knuckle and then trap the hand almost immediately, right? What I don't wanna do is doing this motion right here. 
right? Because that motion right there has a gap, you see? See how the stick will still travel through. Even if I hit his hand, boom, he might still hit me. So I want the timing between the stick and the hand almost simultaneously, bah, like that. As long as I check. As soon as I check, I don't let this thing go. I don't go for any sort of disarm because this arm to me is incidental, right? It's like by accident, oh crap, I end up in a position where I can wrap my arm. Well, maybe I get in a position where the stick happened to be right here in, in this position, right? Then I'll go for this arm. But the first thing I need to do is you hit the hand, you check the hand. The first thing I teach is you hit the leg, right? Or hit the elbow or hit the body. So that's the first thing you can do. Go back, back right there. That's one. I know that we have to top out the free hand. So sometimes when I hit like that, see my hand, I'll go through the arm like that. I have to control this weapon because the moment I get to control of this hand, I need to be aware that he's going to try to pull this back. So one way is I will control with the hand and pulling him towards me. So now you try to pull back, we're fighting this. While we're fighting this, then I got the weapon, the back of the chance to attack any of the limbs or maybe the body or the head, right? That's one way. The other way is I follow him. He comes in, my body comes here. Notice how my body follows him this way. Then you have opportunity to hit towards the leg, the groin, the head, or the arm, right? So I'm gonna change the angle real quick. Right, number one is the attack. If I had to come in this way, I attack, I check, then the leg, then the arm. Sometimes you attack, boom, right, a little faster. Pat right there, see my hand? Once I hit the hand, I pass. Then I'll hit the leg, body. As I go through, I go like this. Because I don't know if he's gonna attack me or he's gonna stay right there. If he does attack me, pop, perfect. My hand is here, then I attack, and attack, and I'll move, right? In a lot of system, you'll see this type of motion. You go one, two, he attack, boom, three. He might attack me again, boom, five, six, right? It's almost like trapping with a stick. Because in that motion, I'm also teaching myself to take away his barrier of defenses. He might defend when I hit him like that, right? He might defend, he might defend, he might defend, he might defend, right? And then he might defend like that, right? As he's defending, I'm learning how to get rid of the barrier of the defenses one by one, right? But you also have to look at this too. I could, because in the system, we do teach how to do into what we call a snake, right? But you notice that if that was a blade doing this, I'm gonna get cut if it pulls back. So sometimes I'll grab like this. Sometimes I'll go under like that. You have different sectors that you can work with, depending on the stick, or that's a blade, or maybe a shorter uh, um, edge weapon, right? So the first one is you attack the hand like that. As I move away from the center, boom, that's attack. This is called the whip tick. I whip the stick, I check, and I hit the hand. So sometimes you go one and two like that, right? So if he comes into attack, I move my body, and I just tap, 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 like that. The other way is I'll come in this way to attack, right? You notice how I jam my body into him like this? I sort of create a re uh, reinforcement behind the stick. As I come in a duck, my hand like that. Now, you have ways to attack. And that's saying that only if I was caught up in a position where I'm, allowed to, I'm not allowed to escape. If this happens, right, boom, I get into a position where I can finally get a wrap of his arm like that. I still have to be very careful because I have done this in a time where people are stronger than me, push up or down for me. See, now my hand is in a super weird position. So in order for me to get this properly, I have to really control the wrist and then fold it down like that. That's only if I can get that position. Then we might be fighting this for a while. So what I like to teach is, it's not like I don't like this arm, I love to play this arm, because sometimes as soon as angle one, I'll back it up, the angle two comes in, maybe you'll have that motion right there, right? But it's still difficult to get. One of the successful this arm for me in sparring is when I, he comes in, and I just hit him right there. Sometimes hit him a little harder, they'll shock, they'll drop the stick. This motion tap really good. It's a double tap, right? Pop, pop right there. Because you know the hand is gonna chamber. As it chamber back, you follow through right there on the hand. Then maybe you can control the grab the hand like that. Now you have this motion to sort of uh, attack him. But this rule for me becomes a trap. I trap the weapon for a split second. Then you have this old motion. As you try to get away with this, then you have all the attack that you wanna do, right? But that's always talking about jamming into a space, jamming into his position so that I can control this uh, line properly, okay?